Hi there, Kent Lawson from Smart House Electric. I have brought you here to my home tanning bed here. Uh, a pretty basic unit, uh, but it still has an electronic board and 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 uh, compensation for um, uh, for the induction and all this kind of good stuff that you will find in a more advanced machine. So I'm going to give you some general troubleshooting skills uh, on this machine and um, to give you an idea that you then can replicate to uh, to the machine that you particularly are looking at. This video we're going to look at the timing system and contactor. Here's our electronic board and what it's doing and as it is in many other tanning beds is that it controls the time, the time that you give from the display is going to be processed in this board and activate a relay to activate the contactor. And why is that necessary? Why can't we just have this board um, start the lamps? Because the ballast and the lamps are pulling a lot of power a lot of way too much power for this little board here to be able to handle as far as the current load so there the the board has to outsource it to something bigger a relay or more known a more commonly used name is contactor and a more pres more true name actually to use so um this how that works is that the board here will send out a power that will magnetize a, uh, a coil in here and then something inside of here is magnetic and that's gonna make this be, uh, to be dragged down and it's spring-loaded inside so it will jump back up again the moment that you don't induce power on it anymore and so that's going to pull down this arrangement that's going to make connection between these. So it's like a giant switch, essentially. The way you troubleshoot that to find out if, if this is working or not, you need, again, need a multimeter. So here, remember, you have to go back from your amperage down to volts, uh, volt AC, that wavy line, it's called a sinus curve, and always inspect your probes, make sure that they don't have any breakage in them. The place you, you, you certainly need to look for that is right here as it goes into the probe, they will open up. And, uh, and create uh, a dangerous situation for you. So right now we got power on our machine. So let's see what it does here. If we put our probes on here, look at that, 240 volts. Hey, there's power across here. There's power here. Well, it's not engaged. The lamps are not lit up. What's what's happening with that? Why is there power on it? Well. What we're seeing is there isn't power going. There's 120 on one side and 120 on the other. So they're waiting for this contactor to engage in order for a current to go, in order to close the circuit. So that's how you're measuring. If you measure on a contactor like this, there's actually engaged then you probably have a burnt surface, a burnt contactor inside and the relay or the contactor is defective. This doesn't go for if you have what's called a, a normally closed or NC. If you have a, a, um, a, a contact surface, actually let me show you here. Here's another example of a contactor. I don't know if you can see it there, but we have a contactor up here that's saying NC and one saying NO. NO is normally open, normally closed, 
is that under these normal circumstances that, that is right here, um, these are um, this one, the NO is 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 um, yeah. Actually, let me let me show you. Let me show you with a continuity test. So we take our gauge here and move it all the way down into the one thing ohms that had the little ohm mark, and then this measure here. And see, our normally open doesn't have any continuity. It doesn't have a connection between. Normally closed. Interesting. So these kind of contacts here are, they're usually only one of them, if there is any at all. And then check this out. If we hold down our uh, contact, our uh, coil, it's going to break. So it's it's only when the relay is at rest that a normally closed um, contact is open and leading electricity from one side to another. And our normally open, like this, will engage the moment that you put power to the coil of your uh, contactor. So I hope that kind of gave you an idea. If not, please comment below and, and I'll explain, uh, give a better explanation on this. Um, another thing when you um, troubleshoot this is that you want to make sure you know what kind of contact that you're looking at and what type of uh, coil voltage. What, what kind of voltage is it asking for in order to pull down like that? And here it will say what it's expecting uh, on, on this. Uh, not, not all of them are the same. They're actually very different. But you will have the coil indicated with some kind of, um, with, with some kind of data what it takes. This one here is a little easier to see because the data plate actually says coil to a weight to 240. So on the coil wires, that's what it needs in order to make a connection from one side to another. Of course, if we have a normally closed contact, it will be the opposite. But um, anyway, so, so there's some different models here, but they all work the same. They all work the same, is that there is a coil that needs to be activated with some kind of power that is given up in the data, in the data of the, of the, uh, of the contact or a relay. So how do we troubleshoot that? How, how do we figure this out? So on our contactor here, it's a 230 volt AC coil. That means that this coil down here, that's where the, the, the control voltage of this contactor comes in. Um, and another thing is that these are typically marked A1 and A2. Um, that's very, very general for, uh, for contactors. And um, so that's what it's looking for. So let's get back into our volt settings here. Always make sure you're double checking your your gauge before you put your prongs on here. And then let's put our prongs on here. And there's no voltage, but hey, there's a little bit to ground there. 120. There's nothing going across here. But there's 120 to ground, so that confuses a lot of people. And what that is, is because that it's 230 that it's looking for to engage with. That means that the wire that sits on the other side than the control wire coming from the board, that other wire is a 120 volt leg. So what we're measuring to ground here is that leg. So if you want to make sure that you are measuring only, only 
your start lag here, you will need to disconnect it from the relay. But we don't need to do that. So we know that. And we're going to be looking for um, the 230 volts coming in. So remember, we had 240 volt across all these connectors here. All right. And as you can see, this relay retracted or contact or retracted down and now made a connection across here. Look at that. Zero. And that's what it needs to be. If you could measure any voltage, let's say 10 volts here, then you have a leg that's about to burn out, like a, a connection point here that's about to burn out. And that might cause some lamp flickering inside of the bed. So if that's your problem, you're going in here, you're measuring a voltage drop across here, you probably have an issue right there and you need a new contactor. And so here, look at that, that's our coil voltage now. We had zero before, we had 120 to ground, now we have 234 because our A1, this wire here from the board is now bringing the other 120 leg onto this contactor and that makes it turn on. So here we're dealing with a, with a healthy uh, system that works and again if you measure under these circumstances here and you put your gauge on and you measure some kind of voltage drop, you have an issue, most likely. And look at that, we have 120, oh, sorry, here. We're about 120 to ground, so we know there's power, but there's no drop here from one side to another. And the moment we turn it off, We have 240 across there again. So, simply just a giant switch, and that's how you troubleshoot a switch as well. Uh, in general, is by if you have a voltage drop, that means that it's not connected or it's badly connected, it's some kind of bad connection. You need zero. Um, so that's how a contactor works. It has a coil voltage down here. This one was 230, which is very common for tanning beds. Um, but it can be all kinds of different uh, kind of voltages. Um, some are 120. And so it will have, instead of the, on A2 down here, on the coil, it will be asking for typically a neutral wire instead of a, a, a 120 leg that's opposing the uh, the other 120 leg from the uh, control board. I, 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 I said something there, yeah, opposing leg. That means that, let's say that this one originated from L1, then A2 that creates the other 120 leg will have to come from an L2 or an L3. It has to be an opposing phase. If it was two L1s, then there is no voltage difference. And therefore, no current can flow. No power can run. So, um, this is some uh, very basics here on, uh, on, on troubleshooting a start system and, and a contactor. And um, thank you for watching.